Leslie. First fake news and now fake fragrances? Yes, they're out Say there. Say it isn't They're so. everywhere. Yes, they are. And to tell you what we found at the lab, basically we broke down all the ingredients from the fake and real fragrances and they were completely different. Karen, the chemist at the lab, she's not a fan of fragrances whatsoever because they have something called phthalates in them which we know are hormone disruptors. But that being said, we found banned phthalates in the fake versions of these fragrances and the banned phthalates actually can cause cancer. So, very scary. Is it virtually impossible when looking at the bottles and the packaging? Because I cannot tell any difference. I know <laughs> yeah. this is the real, this is the fake. If, if I turn this around, so I consulted a lot of investigators, counter counterfeit investigators for this piece, and they would tell me, look for this, look for this. For example, they said, with the daisy, the center of the box, the flowers should be perfectly centered with the gold dot, and the fake ones, they're not. But as you can tell, this, they're both perfectly centered. Then, sure. but with the daisy, you can tell that some of the flowers on the edges are crooked. They're not perfectly shaped. But if you don't own the real fragrance, it is so hard to know these things. And a lot of the information online, like the cellophane being loose and all the information is like how to spot fakes, it's not accurate anymore. Because these counterfeiters have gotten so good that it's very hard to tell the difference by just looking at the box. But there are a lot of things that you can do once you get the box and open it. How does it look inside the box? How is the perfume sitting in the cardboard inside? Because they'll skimp on things like that. This was the best fake, this Versace right here. I, I have this perfume at home. I couldn't tell until I got home and I brought the fake home and it was the stem. And you can see how it doesn't look like it fits properly in the bottle as opposed to this one. It kind of is so faint. It just fades into the actual fragrance itself. Another thing I wanna talk about though when it comes to fragrances is, is the gray market. The gray market of beauty, it's $63 billion of sales in the US every year. And the gray market is essentially, let's take a big designer like Chanel or Estee Lauder. And they say that their products can only be sold at department stores. But you find them showing up at discount stores, you find them showing up at drug stores, and that's called product diversion or the gray market. Now the best case scenario with the gray market, you're gonna get a bargain, because things are cheaper, but you're gonna get something that could possibly be very old, you don't know how it's been stored, or you could get a counterfeit because there's an overlap there. And we found that some of the gray market perfumes that we put the batch code in, which is an actual code that's at the bottom of every fragrance that shows where it's made and how old it is. The gray market perfumes were five years old. The ones that we got at a department store were about four months old. Different. So They're if different. you're going into a department store, not as big of a risk? No. Because of the way they're purchasing them. Exactly. They know their suppliers, mm -hmm. but Online, online, discount stores, yes. buyer beware. So clearly with perfumes, there's a shelf life, is what exactly. you're saying, that it, lose, it loses its punch mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. after amount of time that the essential oils, and I guess that's what it's all about, what gives a certain thing a fragrance. Yes. So My big concern in learning and reading about some of the results you found from the lab, and then also the FBI has released that when they've tested these fake perfumes, they found chemicals like ethylene glycol, which is actually a chemical in antifreeze. Um, very toxic, can be very irritating to the skin. People can have allergic reactions. Mm -hmm. They can get rashes from this. A lot of these fakes also have heavy metals like aluminum. And so as these evaporate on your skin, you're actually inhaling those, which is also quite irritating. Mm -hmm. so, so I agree, endocrine disruptors, possible carcinogens. In your case, you found banned yes. phthalates mm -hmm. in your lab investigation, which are known carcinogens. Mm -hmm. I mean, just really scary. scary stuff. Yeah. yeah. As a dermatologist, I'm curious if your belief when it comes to perfumes in general, fake or real, less is more. Less is more. Is that, is that the takeaway here? Yeah, I think that's I think the takeaway. Sure. And that, then that, also know what you're buying, that if you do love that perfume, go through a known channel of mm -hmm. distribution, be very careful about it. And these are women's products, but this is a whole it's huge a whole industry. new area for men, too, that they're <laughs> pushing men and, and like, Spray it in every nook and cranny. It, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, these these full. <laughs> it's just like wake up in the morning, no need to shower, just spray this yeah. cologne all over you. Well, and and, no, and there's no reason I, I don't people think developed colognes people right in France because they didn't bathe as frequently mm -hmm. years, hundreds of years ago, and they didn't have access to the water, so they used to mask those normal odors with perfumes and colognes. And it's kind of scary that it's coming back to that. So. For the record, there's no masking a terrible odor. <laughs> 
There is a washing you away the terrible order. Yeah. There's no masking it. You can cut it a little bit. A putrid <laughs> order becomes <laughs> almost more putrid yeah. with cologne or perfume. Um, great investigation. Thank, Thank you. you.